This creepy thing actually could have been a Mario game at one point. And there was also going to be a post-apocalyptic Zelda game where you'd play as Sheik. And today, we're going to be looking at a bunch of these games that Nintendo had to cancel before they were ever released. Like, for example, there was going to be a spin-off Mario Kart game called Mario Motors. And in this game, you'd have to build parts for your carts by sculpting various pieces of metal to make engines by drawing them with the DS touchpad. Or there was a cancelled Zelda game where the main character was a Goron. It was gonna be on the DS too, since it used the touchscreen for the Goron's rolling mechanic. This game was rejected, but the idea was repurposed for Dylan's rolling western. There's not too much known about these projects, so let's move on to some games with a lot more info on them. We're gonna look at concept art, screenshots, and even gameplay that was never in an official release. Like this cancelled Mario game where the main character was gonna be a Boo. Yeah, like the ghost enemy. Huh. It was gonna be called Boo's Haunt for the Nintendo DS, where you'd play as a Boo that just graduated from Haunt University. From the screenshots, we can see that this game was gonna be very stylized, and the characters look to be pretty expressive. There's these witch enemies in the game, and Boo was gonna have some sort of possession ability where Boo would be able to take over and control his enemies. Which is exactly like Mario Odyssey. Next, we have a cancelled Kirby game called Kid Kirby. And I thought Kirby was already a kid, but guess not. Look, you can even see him in his crib from this official render. And instead of King DDD, we got Prince DDD. He hasn't even been promoted yet. Kirby has this, like, new hair curl here, which begs the question, is his hair actually skin? Well, I guess now we'll never know. But most interestingly, the game was gonna use the SNES mouse controller so the player could fling Kirby around various levels by maybe his hair curl, I don't know. It kinda seemed like an Angry Birds concept to me. The next game here is another weird one because it's like a spin-off of both Mario and Donkey Kong. I don't really know, you be the judge of what you're seeing here. The game was gonna be called Super Donkey that starred this unnamed explorer main character. Some people have claimed that this was the main character from the game Sky Skipper that Donkey Kong was also in, but nothing has confirmed this. The art style is the main thing that sticks out here, as it looks exactly like the Yoshi's Island aesthetic. Who knows which game was developed first, but this might have inspired the look of those games. The gameplay seems pretty interesting too, like just look at some of your movement options here. This guy's insane. Yeah, now these games are really starting to become odd. But before we get into the big prototype games that were scrapped, let's go through a few quick ones that really don't have a lot of info about them. Like at one point there was gonna be a horror game that starred Tingle, you know, that weird guy from the Zelda series? But it was cancelled for many unknown reasons. Or you know how Pokemon Yellow didn't release with any other Pokemon game, which is unusual for the Pokemon series? Well, it looks like it was gonna release with Pokemon Pink at the same time, which starred Clefairy. And this info was found in the game's files. But one of the weirdest rejected games was one that Sega was working on, where you would play as Donkey Kong but he'd be a parking attendant. So you'd have to give out tickets while dodging various cars. Alrighty then. Apparently this one was actually really close to being approved too. Huh, would have liked to seen that one. But anyways, now I want to show you a full prototype for a game that was originally going to be the sequel to Super Mario World. It was going to be called Super Mario's Wacky Worlds, and as you can see, the locations look to be pretty wild here. You jump between ancient Greece, medieval castles, and ancient Egypt too. You ever think you'd see Mario platforming through the Trojan horse? Well, now you have, I guess. Even from this unfinished prototype, it looks really cool, especially all the visuals in the these levels. It was going to be released on the failed Philips CDI console, but was cancelled due to a few leads in the project leaving the company. This could have been like the good version of Mario's time machine. Kirby Tilt and Tumble, a weird but very interesting game that was released on the Game Boy Color. Why am I telling you this though? Well, that's because originally this game was going to have a sequel on the GameCube. There was a whole gameplay demo shown off at E3 2002 that showed some really cool concepts for the game. Basically, 
basically you would have to attach a Game Boy to your console and use it as a controller. This was so you can tilt the Game Boy to move Kirby in a direction by using a GBA motion sensing cart. And the screen on the GBA would even display the bottom layer of the level, meaning in certain parts you would have to look at the other screen. So it looks like Nintendo had many ideas for dual screen games way before the Wii U and DS. Diddy Kong Racing was an instant classic, so it would only make sense to have a sequel for this game. Uh, yeah, it never happened, and this doesn't count. But Rareware was making a sequel for this game, fittingly called Donkey Kong Racing. There was a tech demo shown for this, and man, it looks so cool. Instead of just having Diddy with a bunch of random animals in the game, this time it was gonna have the entire Donkey Kong cast as playable characters. Plus, instead of carts, you'd ride your animal buddies from the Donkey Kong games. They were even keeping the flying and underwater sections in this game too. The atmosphere looks so cool, which made it more of a shame that this was cancelled due to Microsoft buying Rareware. Another cancelled Donkey Kong game was gonna come out for the Game Boy Advance with the name Donkey Kong Coconut Crackers. It was gonna be some sort of puzzle game with a Donkey Kong skin, and it looks like you gotta match the block colors or something. I don't know, I'm too lazy to figure this one out, but it does give me Tetris vibes. This is the first cancelled game that I'm just gonna say, honestly, it didn't look all that interesting so I'm not too disappointed with this one. Still seems cool nonetheless. Now let's look at a cancelled sequel for one of my favorite games of all time, Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. And they were gonna call this sequel Mario 128 for the Nintendo 128. Uh, wait, that's not right. The whole concept for this game was that you were supposed to control 128 AI Marios to show off the GameCube's power. This was shown in a tech demo of this game at Space World 2000, but after many years of development, this game was cancelled. However, the gameplay where you controlled 128 characters became the game Pikmin and the floating spherical stage here became the inspiration for Mario Galaxy. So this game's ideas were still put to good use. The next game here was gonna be a Zelda spin-off game that starred Sheik. It was gonna take place in the bad timeline where Ganon defeated Link in Ocarina of Time. This was gonna be the origin story of the Master Sword and you would play as the last remaining male Sheikah as the rest were wiped out in a genocide. Like holy, just listen to the themes in this Zelda game. And just look at this concept art here too. It seems like this game was gonna be in a much darker, post-apocalyptic version of Hyrule. Plus there's all these other concepts of really creepy looking enemies and characters. Even one of the employees named Sammy Hall said that this game was going to be 10 times weirder than any other Zelda. While these concepts seem awesome, the gameplay didn't really work out as it was too experimental which caused it to be cancelled. Damn, now that seems like a huge bummer. Now we have one of the most infamous cancelled games, Earthbound 64. This game was going to be the sequel to Earthbound that would come out on the Nintendo 64 disc drive. Based on the footage, it seemed like this game would take the RPG gameplay from Earthbound and translate it into a 3D setting. Even having some really cool set pieces where you drive on this hovercraft in the desert, or another scene where you'd be in a minecart and see the mineshaft crumbling down after you. But after dealing with many challenges involving the 3D graphics, this project was cancelled in the year 2000. However, the developers were so passionate about this game that they restarted it and began to make it again for the game Boy Advance as Mother 3. And this version did actually release, only in Japan that is, but still. The next cancelled game is a really weird one though, and that's because, well, people don't even know if this was even going to be a game in the first place. This all came from a tech demo that was shown off in Space World 2001 with the title Meowth's Party. And it looked to be some like rhythm or guitar hero type game that starred Meowth as the guitarist and a bunch of random Pokemon rocking out in the crowd. Not a lot is known about this game, so people have mostly speculated on what it could be. Maybe it was just a demo of the GameCube's graphics, maybe it would have been its own game, or maybe it was the beta for the Pokemon Channel game on the GameCube. But I guess we'll never know. 
Now let's move on to not Mario Strikers, but Mario Spikers. Yes, a cancelled sequel for the Mario Soccer game on the Wii. But instead of soccer, the game would be a mix of wrestling and volleyball. Yeah, unusual premise, but just take a look at the concept art for this game. The stadiums and character designs look awesome and seem to keep up with the gritty art style in the Strikers series. There's even a bunch of unused animations for this game too. Some of them are brutal, like look at these characters stomping on top of one another. Funny enough, this was actually the reason the game was cancelled, because these realistic wrestling moves don't align with Mario's wholesome content. Now let's take a look at a game that would have been the sequel to Kirby's Dream Course. Yeah, you know that weird golfing-like game on the SNES, but with Kirby as the golf ball? Well, it looks like they liked it so much that they were creating a sequel for it on the Nintendo 64 called Kirby Bowl 64. It does resemble the previous game, but it now looks like it has more of a racing vibe since you see Kirby on a snowboard in parts of it. There is also a few screenshots for this game, but that's about it. While it was cancelled, the ideas from it were used in two different Kirby games, surprisingly. The racing mechanic was used as the foundation for Kirby's Air Ride, and the bumping multiplayer mode was reworked into Kirby's Dream Buffet. Neat. This next game here was actually going to be a brand new IP intended for the N64 that was made by Rareware. It was called Dinosaur Planet and actually seemed to have a lot of the game completed. It was going to be this Zelda-type adventure game where you'd explore a dinosaur world. It seemed to have some cool concepts too, like you would switch between the two main characters and the game was semi-open world. So why was it cancelled then? Okay, well get this, I find it hilarious. Basically, as the developers were working on this game, Shigeru Miyamoto noticed that the characters looked very similar to the Star Fox characters. So, he wanted them to cancel Dinosaur Planet and make this into a Star Fox game. And yup, that's what they did. Dinosaur Planet never saw the light of day. However, they were able to repurpose the levels and gameplay mechanics into this Star Fox game that did actually release as Star Fox Adventures, but many other aspects of Dinosaur Planet were never used. Alright, you see this really weird looking game here? Well, it actually could have been an official Mario game, but it wasn't exactly made by Nintendo. It was made by the group called Ideas from the Deep, and this was simply a port of Mario Bros. 3 running on PC. Now, 2D side-scrollers were really hard to run on PC at the time, so they made this port after creating a new way of having these types of games be able to work on PC. This prototype was sent to Nintendo and made it into the company office is. However, it was rejected by Nintendo since they said that they only wanted Nintendo games to be on Nintendo hardware. However, they were really impressed with the team's work. After this, the devs who made this founded id Software and went on to make classics like Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. So definitely their talents weren't put to waste. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed hearing about these games, and I'll see you later.